All right, this is a closer up view of the inverter and the motor gearbox. This is the connection I was talking about before that uh, connects between the inverter from the battery pack. There's two blade style connectors. Terminals come in and then one bolt go across there and an O-ring seal to keep it dry. It's a pretty interesting connection. Um, the inverter has a similar connection as well as the charger. The inverter obviously you're running three connections. Instead of going to a blade style terminal they actually crimp on these ends and uh, the crimped end is actually what makes the contact directly. And the I can get this off. This is the charger connection. This goes off to the, to the Lear charger. It's actually a Lear wiring harness. One side goes to the charger and one side goes to the um, to the actual pack. Interesting thing to note is inside of here is it's actually fused with uh, two 30 amp fuses built in. Just uh, standard little fuses, just like you'd find in a uh, Manzina PFC 30. Uh, you've got the, uh, it's fused at that point, and this plugs where it goes into the actual inverter. Maybe fused in other, port, uh, other parts. Talked a little bit about the, this gearbox. There's not a lot known, at least my scouring of the internet to, to find out about so I'm interested to get the case cracked open and find out. So right here uh, is where the connection is made to the gas engine. So this is a coaxial motor. There's actually one motor inside and one motor outside. From what I can tell, and I'll, I'll know more once we crack the case open, there is actually <clears throat> no physical connection between the gas engine and the uh, the drivetrain, unlike in a, in a Prius. So it, um, one thing to note is that a lot of people call it a CBT. It is just a single speed gearbox. Don't know the gear ratio yet, but when we get the, the case open, we'll find out more on that. And one other note, there is this lever here. Uh, I believe it's uh, electrically actuated and, uh, or actually mechanically actuated for the parking brake. Is, I think it's just a parking prowl. Other things are that I was able to get all the connectors and most of the wiring harness for the system. My hope is that um, we would actually be able to crack this inverter with something like a, a JevQ to make it fool it and think it's still inside of a Chevy Volt, but that's going to take quite a bit of work. Someone with a lot of experience with CAN bus, which is not me, fortunately. And as far as the, the gearbox, the axle shafts come out of here, one hole on either side, and go directly to the axle. The hope is that you'd actually just be able to buy a wrecked volt front end, get rid of the uh, gas engine, be able to use the electric motor. It's a 111 kilowatt uh, motor, and it moves the 3,800 pound volt quite nice. It's a little sluggish off the line, it's really a software issue. Um, I think the Chevy designers did it to be on the conservative side that there's about a one second delay with a very very slow ramp rate and power. But once you're moving from 30 on up you've got very good power response right there. And I said for, for uh, a 3800 pound car it's more than adequate. If you put, put it into a car that weighs half as much it would be even that much better. Or if you're really crazy and you put two of these, you know, one front and one back, it would be even that much more fun. Uh, the nice thing is, at least right, as of right now, these motors and inverters can be had for very cheap. Uh, can't remember the exact amount because I bought it as, a, as an entire package. Uh, but you know, I was able to buy the, the motor, the gearbox, and obviously they're integrated with the inverter, and it would be around a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. You know, you can't even buy a Warp 9 uh, motor new for that price, used maybe, uh, but that certainly wouldn't come up with a controller that would go uh, to 111 kilowatts. So um, that's if we can get this working, that's going to be a big challenge. Uh, communication, it's obviously not, uh, Chevy's not doing open source or 
sharing out their code. So uh, luckily we do have uh, an identical drivetrain in an operational car so we can actually sniff the CAN bus and try to, try to di d uh, figure out the signals from there or the commands and then p perhaps be able to reproduce that. Um, but again, not, a, not an easy task. A couple other things to show while we're here. We have the old aircraft batteries that came out of my first project, a drag trike called the Leadwing. There we have the Miata, the I've only taken it at uh, autocrossing so far, but hoping to get it back on the track. This is part of the old pack, A123 cells. Back there are the Ennerdale power cells that will go into it. So this, the cells are rated for 300 kilowatts and will match quite well with the Soliton controller. As you can see, the battery pack is out right now. It just moved into the new shop. Just a simple pole barn, but uh, work in progress. That's the other vehicle. It's a BMW 318i. It currently has a GE 11 inch motor into it. It's a bit interesting. It's I bought it from a Dodge Dakota project that didn't go through. So, uh, or the they had for many years, but the batteries died and got the motor in the controller. But it was had an adapter to go to a Dodge truck transmission. Well, the original transmission was only rated for 83 horsepower. Luckily, I was able to find that the AX15 transmission used on later Dodges for a few years had the same bell housing pattern. So I was able to fit that in with a little bit of work. I'm pretty sure this is the only BMW 3 Series with a full-size Dodge truck transmission. And uh, uh, 11 inch motor is, is fine, but uh, as I say, more is, more is better. Um, also under it, it's actually dual motor, but it's not another 11 inch, it's hooked to a AC24 motor that uh, is belted, and I think I'll save that for the next video. So the hood will remain closed. Well, this is my first time making a video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please feel free to write into the comments or uh, let me know that you guys got value, and I'll do more videos as I tear into the Chevy Volt Pack and put it into the next project. If anyone wants to give me a hand getting the Chevy Volt inverter working, and communicating, and trying to sniff out the CAN bus and uh, perhaps make a JEVQ uh, work with it, please contact me. I'd be very interested. I'm a mechanical engineer, not a computer science, so uh, uh, that's a bit outside my, my comfort zone. And so I'd love to hear from people that have more experience with that than that with me. So I'd love to hear with, from people that have more experience with that with than I do. And uh, with that, thanks.